الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. I I did not want to give the last class because you and another brother apologized and another brother asked me to that he cannot. Did you take him with you to Apex? Oh no, he was visiting his ah, parents. He was visiting. Okay. Yeah, so they, they, his parents are in Puerto Rico. They're without power for more than a month. So how are they? Well, they're doing okay. Alhamdulillah. Now things are better, inshallah. Uh, you know, some places are. They, some they places. don't have power still, and the water's off and on. Khair, inshallah. May Allah make it easy for them. And all people who are suffering, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uplift the suffering also, our brothers and sisters who are suffering in this suburb of Damascus, they have been under siege for now five years, and now it's it's more intensive siege. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them. There's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can help in this, who can really change their situation. Alaykum salam wa wa So, uh, I did not like to, to skip the previous halqa because there were some brothers, they they came exclusively for this, so anyway, inshallah, it's there, it's recorded, we did not take a lot. So we, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings, uh, started talking about the story of Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam. And before that, we continue in our book of Al-Adhkar by Imam al-Nawawi radiyallahu anhu rahimahullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. Imam al-Nawawi, who was born 631 of the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and passed away uh, 676 of the Hijrah. He says, Imam al-Nawi radiallahu anhu, wa rawayna fi kitab al-Tirmidhi an ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal, this is the third last hadith in this section, which is the introductory section in which Imam al-Nawawi, the last introductory section, let's say, or the last introductory chapter in which Imam al-Nawawi, radiallahu anhu, he is mentioning the merits of dhikr, which is not restricted to a specific time or circumstance. Dhikr in general, the merits of dhikr. And this is, I think, almost hadith, num hadith number 20. or So he mentioned almost 25 ahadith, and honestly, if he wanted to mention more, there is more. But even one of those ahadith, single hadith of those ahadith is more than enough to show you the greatness, the importance, the benefits of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general. But he mentioned, may Allah reward him, 25 ahadith, and there is more. Uh, and that will be enough, inshallah. The, the, this is almost third last hadith in this chapter. He says, وَرَوَيْنَا فِي كِتَابِ التِّرْمِذِي عَنْ إِبْنِ مَسْعُودٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لقيت إبراهيم صلى الله عليه وسلم ليلة أسري بي فقال يا محمد أقرئ أمتك السلام وأخبرهم أن الجنة طيبة التربة عذبة الماء وأنها قيعان وأن غراسها سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر قال الترمذي حديث حسن He's saying, we have narrated in the book of a Tirmidhi from Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I met Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyiduna Ibrahim, the close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the uh, forefather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest of the prophets after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said he met him in the night of Isra, you know, the night of the the uh, night journey when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was taken in a journey at night from where Al Masjid al Haram, the sacred masjid in Mecca, to Al Masjid al Aqsa in Palestine, right? That was the Isra, the night journey. Then from there to the heaven, the ascension, right? Isra is mentioned in the Quran. There is a surah chapter named after this journey, Al Isra, right? Subhan Alladhi Asra bi Abdi. So, of course, that that journey was a very, very important journey for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It came after many calamities that afflicted him sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it came like like 
recreation for him sallallahu alaihi wasallam it came like uh, to give him some consolement or console consolation right sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what a great consolation to travel to al masjid al aqsa and meet all the prophets and go up to the heavens and meet prophets also uh, prophets and prophets telling you uh, some advices and, and saying salam to you and Allahu Akbar. What a great consolation. What a great journey. And of course, he saw Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Isra night. He saw Al Jannah. He saw Jannah. He saw the hellfire. He saw some people being uh, tortured. And he mentioned to us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why they are being tortured. So that is what will happen, or that is what is happening now in the Barzakh, in the life between this dunya and the hereafter right and he saw jannah he saw how some people also being getting uh, the, the pleasures of jannah and enjoying the rewards from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, of course this journey needs to be studied and we have to study the hadith and and what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us uh, in that hadith or, or in that journey so in that journey he said i met ibrahim sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, O oh Muhammad, give salam to your Ummah. Alayka salam ya Sayyidina Ibrahim. And subhanAllah, uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim is special. We make salam for him in every salah, in every tashahud, right? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim. Right? So Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, he struggled a lot in his life and he sacrificed and he showed great, great, great submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Allah commanded him what? The greatest test that he received is what? To sacrifice his son, right? To sacrifice his son, he submitted. Alayhi salam. This is why Allah kept his mention and exalted his mention and praise until the day of judgment. In every salah we mention him, alayhi salam. And subhanAllah, this is related by the way to, just came to my mind, this connection between Sayyiduna Ibrahim and the topic that we will talk about, the story of Sayyiduna Nuh, alayhi salam. The people, be, right before the time Sayyiduna Nuh came, they were righteous people. Five very, very, very righteous people. And people, they were connected with them and they were learning from them. So Sayyiduna, uh, before Sayyiduna Nuh came alayhi salam, Shaytan came after those five people passed away. And these five people, they're mentioned in the Quran. After these five people passed away, Shaytan came to the people in that time and whispered to them to make statues for those righteous people. And they were convinced so that they put these statues in the place where they used to sit with their, with their uh, teachers and they, those scholars and those very righteous people. Then the hadith says, and this is not the hadith, the athar. The athar, athar is from other than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This athar from Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas also some scholars talked about it, so it's not like certainty. But anyway, he says, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas, that when those people made those statues, uh, people did not worship them. But after that generation passed away, and their offspring, so the, the coming generation, so that generation, even though they had those statues, they did not worship those statues. And they were just remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, remembering their teachings when they're looking at them. They remember, they connect, oh, you know, when he told us this, you know, when he told, talked about this, when you know, right? So they did not worship them. But after these people passed away, their children came. And their children and their children, they started saying, Ah, oh, our forefathers, you see these, they used to sit and worship these statues. So Shaitan, of course, took them step by step until they, he made them deviate. But the point, the connection here is, Islam forbids 
building statues to commemorate or to praise people then what does Islam do? what is the method of Islam to commemorate or to praise or to remember those great people? what is it? the method of Islam in this field is to narrate their stories as just as we are doing now just as we are doing now we narrate their stories and we mention them and we learn from them that is the method of Islam in this regard to mention them in the books to mention their stories to always talk about them but not to build statues for them that is not not permissible in in our Sharia ah, in Islam that is not permissible uh, so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an example about Sayyidina Ibrahim Allah kept his mention and until now we mention him and we remember him and the, the scholars of Islam they recorded the lives of the prophets all that the details that they can get they recorded it then also the Sahaba the scholars recorded the lives of the Sahaba themselves so this is how we uh, immortalize immortalize how we immortalize our great people means how we keep their mention how we we show our pride of them and how we show our love for them and our respect for them not by building statues for them but by always remembering them mentioning their stories <coughs> mentioning their sacrifices learning from their experiences that's the method of Islam in this regard and we pray for them of course and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us with them so Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam, he told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Aqri ummataka salam, give salam to your ummah. So some scholars they say, you say, wa alayka salam ya Sayyiduna Ibrahim, may, may Allah raise your position more and more and shower you with, with more blessings, O oh Sayyiduna Ibrahim. And tell them, give salam to your ummah, he's giving us salam, alayhi salam. And tell them that Jannah is very fertile in its... Uh, dirt or in its uh, turab soil. its soil that's the word Allah is clear its soil is very fertile and its water is very fresh and very very pure and very good and that it is qi'an that it has no plants no trees it's like a desert what does that mean this means as the scholars commented because there are many ayat in the Quran that tells us uh, there are jannat, there are gardens, there are uh, shades and very big and long shades in jannah etc. So how do you understand the hadith with these ayat? We don't come right like some people who did not learn. Ah, oh, this hadith is against the Quran. It's a lie. It's not. It's fabricated. It's authentic hadith. But this is how ignorant people behave. This is how ignorant people behave. So you have to, to learn, see how the scholars understood. So this means that some of the Jannah, some of the some of paradise, that there are places in paradise that are bare or like a desert. Yet it has a very, very good and very fertile soil and very great and good water. And there is another part which is planted and you will get that part. But here is a chance for you to plant something here in this dunya, in this world. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the angel to plant it for you. And now very nice, very nice comment by some, one of the scholars. We're going to mention it now. So then he said, and وَأَنَّ غِرَاسَهَا The seedlings, right? Seedlings or the plants or the trees and the the plantation of Jannah. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Imam Tirmidhi said this is an authentic hadith, Hassan hadith. So this is an example or a hadith about the merits of these great words, Subhanallah, how perfect Allah is. Subhanallah means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above and beyond any imperfection. And He has all perfection, that's Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, we explained all these words many times, of course, before. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, this is a word that fills the scale, as Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I gave two khutbahs, if you check the last two khutbahs, 
or three khutbas, there are two among them only about this word, Alhamdulillah. Just two khutbas about Alhamdulillah. This word, it fills the scale, as Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when you say Alhamdulillah, and there is a nice, very nice hadith also in this regard, uh, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever says Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen with sincerity, he will get 30 hasanat. 30 hasanat. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of all the creation. Wala ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship but Allah. Wallahu Akbar, Allah is a greater and is the greatest. He is greater than everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you should put him ahead of everything. You should put his, command, his commands and his teachings ahead of anything because he's the greater, he's the greatest, and he's greater than everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so the scholars commented that this hadith doesn't mean that the, the Jannah doesn't have palaces and trees. and No, there are a lot of gardens in, in, uh, in Jannah and there are some places okay, which, are, which are ready for you to plant it. And one of the scholars commented very nice comment here. He's saying that when you see something that you planted by yourself, you will have like a time of sweetness and pleasure. Right? Maybe you don't feel, have this feeling unless you, you plant and you eat from what you plant, then you will feel this. Even if you just plant some tomato or, or uh, mint in your backyard, you plant it yourself and you take care of it, then when you reap the fruits, you will feed besides the sweetness and the joy of the food itself, you will, you will feel another type of sweetness and pleasure. So, you will enjoy in Jannah those gardens and palaces that are already there, but you will have extra pleasure to enjoy the things that you planted here in this world by these afikar. So this is a, a space for you here, uh, there, that you can plant and you can make as big as you like. SubhanAllah. So be, when, you, when you do something and you, you just like you know, like what? Like the, the, like your own salary. When you work hard, then you receive the benefit. You feel some joy and sweetness, right? You taste the sweetness of achievement that you have done something, then you have got, you got this because you worked hard, right? It has a special pleasure, right? Pleasure is not only food and drink and, right? There are many other pleasures, right? Wallahi, sometimes I find a hadith, Wallahi, it's, it's greater than giving me million, billion dollars. A hadith, sometimes I find it, I say, Allahu Akbar, SubhanAllah, Wallahi, you feel sweetness that nothing can give it to you other than uh, a similar hadith or an ayah or a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes you, you're like, subhanAllah, look how amazing, right? So that is, that is the meaning of, of this hadith. In the other sections of Al-Adhkar, we stopped at the dhikr after wudu. Imam al says, Faslun وَيَقُولُ بَعْدَ الْفَرَاغِ مِنَ الْوُضُوءِ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنِي مِنَ التَّوَّابِينَ وَاجْعَلْنِي مِنَ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَبِحَمْدِكَ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْكَ So Imam Nawawi here he summarizes and put together all the dhikr that you say after finishing your wudu what do you say after you finish your wudu you wash your left foot أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah alone without any partner with him and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and messenger you can say Muhammad أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا you can say what is better as Many scholars say you, say, you give him the title of respect, you say, Ashhadu anna Sayyidana Muhammadan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even Imam ibn Kathir, in his commentary on one of the ayat uh, about the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, uh, وَيَجِبُ أَنْ يُسَوَّدَ وَيُعَظَّمْ 
ايش يعني يسود يعني يعطى لقب السياده صلى الله عليه وسلم that you give him this title imam ibn kathir in his commentaries on this some of the ayat says this and and he should be respected and and given this title of siyada sallallahu alayhi wasallam because he is sayyid he is the master of all creation as he told us sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he is the greatest servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so i bear witness that sayyiduna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so for example here salah ala nabi is not mentioned but he told us whenever you hear my name say sallallahu alayhi wasallam right so you if you want to be literal you can that's fine it's not haram you don't have to say it this way you're fine you can you can say oh, no i want to follow the exact wording of the hadith it's fine but don't come and fight with us and say no no you have to stick to no we we don't want to we we don't want to stick to the letter of the, of the hadith and leave another hadith no we want to apply all of the hadith together you see wa ashhadu anna sayyidana muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu allahumma ij'alni min at-tawabin oh allah make me from those who constantly repent to you. Tawabin. It's not only those who repent, no. Constantly. And if they constantly repent means what? <coughs> what does it mean? They do wrong. They do wrong a lot. And this is what Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of the children the children of Adam are fallible, right? And the best of, of those who are fallible or those who make mistakes are those who repent a lot. Those who repent a lot. And also there's another possibility, you repent a lot, not only, be, not necessarily because you do sins a lot, but you show, always you show your humiliation and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your uh, humbleness, just like our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa he says, by Allah, I ask Allah for forgiveness, and I repent to him every day more than 70 times. He doesn't have sins, sallallahu alayhi wa <coughs> This is teaching us, this is showing us, showing his humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also protection from possible possible sins. That's from our side. From him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. From his side, he's infallible. Oh Allah, make me of the tawabin, those who repent a lot. Wajalni min al mutatahirin. Of course, I don't have to remind you that you have to to memorize all of these adhkar that we're we're learning, right? Every two weeks we're learning one dhikr and some of them we're using them and in, in, we're mentioning them and, and doing them in our dhikr before the halqa. So please uh, write them down, learn them, uh, memorize them and most importantly understand their meanings and start using them. Inshallah one, two, three weeks then you, you find that they have become part of your, of your uh, ibadah, of your daily uh, routine. <coughs> But we don't want them to make to we don't want to make them as a routine in the sense as many of us we just say them without reflection. No. Wajalni min al mutatahirin and make me of those who who constantly purify themselves. What is that? Mutatahirin, that's the physical purity. So first you're asking Allah to make you of those who internally purify themselves. Then asking Allah to make you of those who physically constantly purify themselves. Which is one which one is mentioned first? The internal purity. And this is what's mentioned in the ayah, Surah Al-Baqarah. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Surely Allah loves those who purify their souls by tawbah, by repentance, constantly and those who constantly purify their bodies. Tawabin and Mutatahiri. One of the shaykhs, he said, I wish we take care of our souls as we take care of our bodies. There's maybe no three or four days that pass unless one of us takes a shower and cleans his body, but how often do we clean our souls? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to purify our souls. Then you say, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Glorified you are, O Allah. You are above all imperfections. And you have all perfection. Wa bihamdik. And I, I praise you and thank you. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but you. Astaghfiruka. I seek your forgiveness. Wa atubu ilayk. And I turn and repent to you. That is what you say after, after wudu. Okay, we will stop here, inshallah. Next time we will mention uh, 
the hadith Imam Nawi now told us what you say now he is gonna mention the hadith where did he get that from he's gonna mention some hadith three or four we're gonna mention them next time inshallah so that we can talk a little bit about Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam after ten generations of Tawheed of people from the time of Sayyiduna Adam all the way until the, until the time of Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam despite corruption despite bloodshed that took place despite some deviation in the social relations right some adultery started uh, appearing right we mentioned this, some of these stories before Yet, still people are on Tawheed, still people are worshipping Allah alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just now, we have many Muslims, they worship Allah alone, they have no shirk, no, they don't associate partners with Allah, but still, they do some sins, some of them they drink, some of them they don't commit to the, to the hijab, to the right hijab, some of them they steal, some of them they deal with usury or, usury or usury? Huh? Usury. Usury. Okay, so both, so two opinions, two, two schools. Okay, so usury, usury, okay? Some of them, they deal with riba, they with usury with interest, okay? Some of them, so still they're Muslims and they do some sins. May Allah forgive us and forgive them and uh, help us to repent. But still, at least, still they're believers, right? They're still believers, they're still muwahideen, uh, right? They're still believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that was the situation after Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam all the way until Sayyiduna Nuh. Right before the time of Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam, we mentioned the story of those people. We explained it today again. And Rasulullah tells us, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, not, not Rasulullah, sorry, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas, most likely he got it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that between Sayyiduna Adam and Sayyiduna Nuh, they were 10 Qurun, means 10 generations. All of them are on Islam. All of them are following Islam. What does that mean? So Islam in this hadith means what? Submission. Submission. So here the literal meaning, right? Sayyiduna Ibrahim was Muslim or not? Of course, Sayyiduna Nuh, all the prophets were Muslims, right? The Hawariyin, the disciples, right? The disciples, right? Of Sayyiduna Isa. In the Quran, we have uh, uh, The disciples they said, bear witness that we are Muslim. What does that mean? That's the literal meaning of the word that we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And all all prophets were Muslims, of course, in the sense that they all submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the greatest and the most the most grave or the gravest sin started appearing which is what shirk associating partners with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the worst sin that is the sin that cannot be forgiven in what sense if you die having this sin خلص, you're done no salvation no way it can be changed. No way you can enter Jannah if you die while you're having this biggest and, and uh, greatest sin, which is shirk, to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in one of the hadith, of course this is in the Quran, but uh, to take close wordings from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa since I'm saying this is the, the greatest sin, right? The greatest sin. Rasulullah was asked, sallallahu alayhi wa as in the hadith narrated by Imam Bukhari and Muslim and others, from Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Mas'ud. He was asked, sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Rasulullah, ayyu dhambi inda Allahi a'dam. Which sin is the greatest in the sight of Allah? Which is the greatest sin? He said, an taj'ala lillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqa. To make a partner with Allah, even though Allah is the one who created you. Right? That's the greatest sin. The biggest sin is to associate a partner with Allah and make a partner to Him and worship someone besides Him, someone or something besides Him, even though He's the one who created you. 
And that is a very, very big injustice, right? It's very big injustice. It is the biggest injustice against yourself. You cannot wrong Allah. It's injustice against your, your own self, right? It's injustice towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. You're not being just with him. He created you, then you worship someone else. Subhanallah, what's, what, what ingratitude this is, right? Very in, big ingratitude that you worship someone other than the one who's given you. He's giving you everything, created you, <laughs> supplying you with every second with countless blessings. Then you direct yourself to someone else. You worship someone else. Astaghfirullah. So this is why he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَن تَجْعَلَ لِلَّهِ نِدًّا وَهُوَ خَلَقُ To make a partner to Allah, and he's the one who created you. قَالَ قُلْتُ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَعَظِيمٌ Really, that is very big. Then what is next? Then he said, to kill your child, fearing that he will eat or decrease your food. This is what some of the Arabs used to do, right? They used to bury their daughters alive, right? As Allah says in the Quran, what a, what a, a bad sin. Then what? Because they don't believe in Allah. They think they, they will be providing her. They, they forgot that Allah is the one who's giving you and giving her. This is why Allah told them in the Quran, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ we are the, one who, the ones who are giving you and giving them, providing for you and for them. It's not you. Don't think you are the one who provides for your family. Always keep your heart connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't depend on the paycheck. It might not come. Something might happen. Right? Keep your heart connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't know what happens. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who provides, right? He's the real doer, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, then what? Then he said to commit adultery with the wife of your neighbor. What an ugly sin. Your neighbor, he trusts you. He's absent. Then you go and you have the sin with his, with his wife, subhanAllah. Then that uh, an ayah came to, uh, uh, in approval of what Rasulullah said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, surah al-Furqan. Uh, Ayah 68 وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. Look, this ayah put these three things together, subhanAllah. So this is how always the hadith explains the sunnah. The hadith explains the Qur'an. The sunnah explains the Qur'an. And those, this ayah is talking about Ibadur Rahman, the true servants of Allah. And those who do not call any God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worship anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they don't kill innocent souls, and they don't commit adultery. These are some of their description. We have to, uh, inshallah, one time explain those ayat that list some of the main characteristics of the true servants of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is why in the Quran we also find in Surah Sayyidina Luqman, alayhi uh, salam, wa radiyallahu anhu, the first will or recommendation or excuse me advice he gave to his son is what who knows if qala luqman libnihi wa huwa ya'idhuhu ya bunayya la tushrik billah oh my son the first advice luqman the wise gave is there uh, in the christian uh, tradition uh, about luqman this this figure luqman the wise a very wise person is there anyone you anyone has an idea so there's a surah in the, in the Quran, it's named after this great man, Luqman al-Hakim, Sayyiduna Luqman. Is, is it Luke? No. No. no, I've never heard about him in the Christian. Yeah. Uh, so he said, oh my son, he has very nice recommendations, very nice advices also that we have to study them and teach it to our kids because he's, this is an example of the father teaching his son. O oh my son, the first advice he gives him, لا تشرك بالله Never associate partners with Allah, never make shirk with Allah. إن الشرك لظلم عظيم Surely shirk is the greatest, is the biggest injustice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam to be the first messenger 
In what sense? The first messenger who was sent to people. Well, Sayyidina Adam was a messenger. Allah sent him with a message, right? But he was just sent to his children. There were no, there were no one else, right? Also Sayyidina Idris, according to most of the opinions that he was also a messenger, but again, he was like the vicegerent of Sayyidina Chief, who was the vicegerent of Sayyidina Adam, still among people who are still on Tawheed. So as if he just continued the message of the previous messenger. But now, Sayyidina Nuh السلام, after 10 generations, now humanity deviated and shirk started. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him with the message to bring people back to Tawheed and oneness of Allah and worship of Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why, this is how we understand the hadith that says that Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam, the first messenger. And we will mention the hadith later on inshaAllah when on the day of judgment, all people will start running to the prophets alayhi salatu wassalam. They will start running to the prophets alayhi salatu wassalam. Why? Why? Why don't they ask Allah right away? Ask Allah right away, people, all people, all people together. What, what do they need? When the sun comes as close as a mile to the heads of people. And by the way, the word mile is, is the shari word that is used in the hadith equals the current mile that we use in English. So they took it from us, right? Yeah, real, real, really. So the mile that is mentioned in the hadith and in fiqh books, the word meal, it's called meal. In fiqh books, it equals mile. If you make the calculations, you find meal, which is in the fiqh books, it equals the mile that we know today in America. Anyway. You know where that came from in America? Of course, from the, the Arabs. Just like many words, check. It comes from sak, sugar, sukkar. So many words, of yeah. course. Civilizations, you know, influence. Our numbers. Num numbers, okay. So anyway, so Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam was the first messenger. So we said on that day when the sun will come so close to the heads of people, like a mile, the distance of a mile. Who knows now the distance of the sun now? 93 million miles now the sun. 93 million miles. Now, if the sun comes close to earth, earth will be burnt, right? And if it comes farther, earth will be frozen. But still, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one who put this law, right? He can change it anytime. Just like when He, when he puts the people in the hellfire, the people of the hellfire, He puts them in the hellfire, practically they will be burnt and khalas, they're done. But no. Allah will give them new bodies and will, will make them feel the punishment and put new bodies again so that they taste the adab. As Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا سَوْفَ نُصْلِيهِمْ نَارًا كُلَّمَا مَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Those who disbelieved and those who rejected our signs we will admit them into the blazing fire. Whenever their skins, the word is used here, madijat, kullama madijat, how the food is cooked. Whenever their skins are burnt, we will replace them with other ones so that they taste the punishment. Because they rejected the signs and the verses and the proofs they came, it came to them very manifest and clear and their mouths as Rasulullah said sallallahu alayhi wa and he put his hand. Someone might think, oh, how, how? You don't know how. It doesn't matter how. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how now we, how now we can, I can see my mom, she's in Syria and I'm here. How? <laughs> right? If you tell someone hundred years ago that if they see the cell phone and uh, speaking, they will, See, maybe this is jinn or this is magic or something, right? We, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will 
treat people and their sweat will reach according to their sins, even though they're close to each other. But Allah will give shade to certain categories of people. Almost 10 categories of people, Allah will give them shade. Allah will create shade for them. Among them, a person who sad to remember Allah in seclusion and he shed some tears, right? As in the hadith in Bukhari or Muslim, very authentic hadith. So come, come early so that you, you have some seclusion and some dhikr before the halqa. Because seclusion, not necessarily by yourself, could be you're in a group, but by you, but you're, you're in seclusion, right? And sometimes you're in seclusion, but you're not in seclusion. <laughs> you're by yourself, but you're, in another way, you're thinking of so many things, right? So in seclusion, you're with Allah alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then how will you have that, that tear? How? The dhikr we do is a training to reach that status. Training when we tell you, feel your heart beating Allah's name. Think of Allah's greatness, Allah's majesty, Allah's blessings, Allah's countless favors upon you. When you're reflecting on this and reflect on your sins, your negligence, your shortcomings, then you should, that will help you to reach that level, that status. Right? And also from those categories of people, I'm mentioning this so that hopefully, inshallah, we'll be among them. Amen is two people who loved one another for the sake of Allah. They met on this and they departed on this. May Allah make us among them. Yeah. Allah knows that I love you for his sake. There is no materialistic benefit between us, right? We gathered on Allah's love. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not depart and separate between us except also on his love and for his love subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah bring us with our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the highest levels of Jannah. Alhamdulillah. So, in that time, in that condition, all people will start because they will remain, who knows how much they will remain, people in the mahshar, in the resurrection area. 50,000 years. 50,000 years. 50,000 years. But is it our years? Alhamdulillah, Allah knows best. We don't know. Now the year here on Earth is 360 days, but the year on Mars is how much? Anyone knows? It's different. The year on Mercury is different. Very slow. Huh? Very slow. Right? Yeah. It's different. So, so which year? We don't know. Even if our years is 50,000 years, two is very, very, very long time, right? So, these years we don't know which year is. One day in the sight of your Lord or with your Lord is like 1,000 years of what you count, as Allah says in the Quran. So, 50,000 years, but for the believer, as Rasulullah mentions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it would be like an obligatory salah. Like five minutes. Like five minutes. Like an obligatory salah. How is that? I was telling brother Abu Nuh that we had a class with the Sheikh Jihad Jihad Brown may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him and protect him we sat almost five hours consistently five hours no break and subhanAllah I'm telling him we did not feel like it's we did not feel that like it's very long we could have even if I stayed like five more hours it would not I would not feel it so sometimes you spend five hours you feel it's like short but sometimes you spend 10 minutes with someone, I hope I'm not of that type of people, you spend 10 minutes with someone, you feel, oh, he has been talking for an hour, ya akhi. Right? So, it, how you feel the time? How you feel the time? So for the disbelievers, it will be 50,000 years. For the believer, it will be like an obligatory salah. SubhanAllah. But people, all of them naked, no shade, all, imagine how many billions. If now we have seven billions, from the time of Sayyidina Adam until the day of judgment, how much will, will there will be? Allah knows best. If now we have seven billion. Well, back then there wasn't that many. Okay, and until the day of judgment, so billions and billions and billions, all in one flat piece of land, no shade, nothing. So people sweating, right? 
So they will start what they want the judgment to start. That's what they want. <laughs> they just want the judgment to start, you know? Like in, in, in Syria, unfortunately, when you apply, when you take the high school uh, uh, test, the, last, the final test of the high school or baccalaureate, we call it, they take like a, more than a month sometimes to, to, to announce the results. So some people really, they get, they say, I just need to know, even if I fail, I just need to know, right? I just need to know, right? So these people, on the day of judgment, they just want the judgment to start. They, they just want it to start, right? So what do they do? They start to going to the prophets, alayhi wa So will people recognize each other on that day? I mean, they'll have to be able to recognize the prophets. They will. This is what the hadith, this is a proof of this, yeah. right? And, and people will recognize their, their parents and their family, yeah. but they will run away from them. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي Allahu Akbar وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِي You will run from your mother. From your mother. You will run away. Allahu Akbar. Your mother. Why? The, eye, the next ayah says, لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِي Everyone has his own disaster on his back. Imagine. لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ شَأْنٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ For every person of them on that day, شَأْنٌ يُغْنِي a matter that, that suffices him, that, that makes him unaware of anything else. And, and he doesn't want, is not ready to, to give or help anyone else. Nafsi, nafsi. So they will run to the prophets. And some of the scholars commented here because he says they used to make the whistle with the prophets in their lives. So now they're, they remember. Uh, we used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these prophets. These, why? We are sinners. We are, we are full of sins. These people are infallible. So we used to, to like they intercede, right? Intercession, right? Yes. So they ask Allah, oh Allah, for this prophet, do this. For Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, forgive me. For this. Well, you can ask him right away. Okay. The people of the day of Jordan, they will not ask him right away. <laughs> they will go to the prophets, alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam. So that the prophets will ask Allah. Because they know. They, they're, they're full of sins. And they know those prophets are infallible. They will go first to who? Sayyiduna Adam alayhi <laughs> salam. Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. They will say, O oh Adam, O oh Adam, you are Allah's prophet. You are the first creature that Allah created you directly by himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he made the angels prostrate to you. And he admitted you into his Jannah, right? So intercede for us with your Lord. Ask your Lord so that he will, he will, what they are, what they're asking for. Just the, the beginning of the judgment. Just so that the judgment starts, right? As in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim and others. Then he will say, Sayyiduna, uh, Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. He will say, he will remember his mistake alayhi salam. The, the eating from the tree, right? And he will, uh, he will say, I'm, I'm ashamed of my Lord. Uh, I already made a mistake. Go to Nuh. He's the first one that Allah sent him to the people of earth. So they will come to Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam. He would say, Lest to Hunakum, I'm not, I'm not the one. I'm not the one who, who can do that. They will say to him, this is the, the point why we mentioned this hadith. He will say, alayhi uh, salam, they will say to him, Anta awwalu, Anta awwalu uh, rasulin ba'athahullah. You are the first, the first messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you to people. Right? Means after Sayyidina Adam and Sayyidina Idris. And Allah named you as a grateful servant. A thankful servant. Allah named him. We will come to this, of course, about Sayyidina Nuh. We're not going to skip any ayah about Sayyidina Nuh that mentions Sayyidina Nuh uh, that has a special description. 
uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ذُرِّيَّةَ مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَ نُوحِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Surely he was Sayyidina Nuh a great, a very grateful Shakur is, this is intensive form not Shakir, Shakur he repeatedly and constantly praises and thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he repeatedly thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Shakur so look now subhanallah look the, the, why they're coming to him you see, he has a privilege they did not have he has a status so they're asking Allah because of this status they're asking him to ask Allah because of his status right they're saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah made you the sent you as the first messenger to the people of earth and he called you or named you as a thankful and grateful servant don't you see what we're suffering from don't you see what what's going on why don't you intercede for us with your Lord then he said surely my Lord today He's showing anger that he has never shown before. Or he's angry like never before. He's very displeased, very angry like never before. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't find the, the, the right word about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us. The language is not, is not uh, sufficient to, to express. But of course, Allah's anger is not like any anger. So, and he will never be angry like this anymore. So that's, that's the utmost anger that he will show, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I had a supplication and I made against my people. I had a supplication. Allah gave me a supplication, but I already made it against my people. And we will stop at this. This is a very, very important topic in the life of Sayyiduna Nuh. But how come he prayed against his people? And he said, Oh Allah, don't leave لا تذر على الأرض من الكافرين ديارة Oh Allah, don't leave a single disbeliever on the face of earth. It might appear now that how, how he does this? But when you understand, you will find that it's very normal. It's very normal. I'll tell you why we might forget to mention this. Why after 90 after 950 years of calling, the, calling those people to Allah and turning away from him and, and closing their ears and covering themselves so that they don't want to listen to him and telling their children and grandchildren, don't listen to this person, he's a crazy, he's mad, he's this, he's this, never listen to him, etc. Yet after all this, Allah revealed to him, إِنَّهُ لَنْ يُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ إِلَّا مَنْ قَدْ آمَنْ they will none will believe from your people except those who already believe so khalas, he understood no one will believe khalas. Allah told him you see the point many people are unaware of this point Allah told him revealed to him that no one else will believe khalas. those who believed they are the ones everyone else is what is not gonna believe so he prayed then oh Allah don't leave any one of those disbelievers on earth why who knows Innaka, the ayah mentions, the next ayah mentions, Innaka in tadarhum yudillu ibadaka wala yalidu illa fajiran kafara. We're gonna come to those ayat again. But this is quick before we forget. Oh Allah, don't leave any single disbeliever on earth. Why? Because if you leave them, they will mislead. See the point? He's not like he's like he doesn't have mercy. SubhanAllah, if you say this, you're absolute ignorant. You know why? Because all of his statements with his people show that he has a great, great, great mercy in his heart. As we will see the very first ayah, he says, Inni akhafu alaykum adaba yawmin azim. I'm afraid for you, right? Afraid for you from a punishment of a great day. And what do you want more, more mercy than showing patience for 950 years calling those people to Allah? And they're mocking you and calling you crazy and calling you mad and, 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 call it, and, and uh, challenging you and this and this. What do you want more mercy? 
So he was merciful السلام, and he was as Allah said من, as, as the scholars mentioned he is from the prophets or the messengers who are explained in the ayah who are mentioned in the ayah فَصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ أُولُوا الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُولِ Allah is saying to his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa and to us after him show patience as those messengers of the strong resolve showed who are the messengers of the strong resolve the messengers of the strong determination and resolve and, 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 and sacrifice who are they? Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyiduna Ibrahim, Sayyiduna Nuh, Sayyiduna Musa and Sayyiduna Isa these are the five, as the scholars mentioned, that Ulul Azm, those of the strong resolve and determination from among the messengers. Sayyiduna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyiduna Ibrahim, Sayyiduna Nuh, Sayyiduna Musa, and Sayyiduna Isa. So, Sayyiduna Ibrahim. Ibrahim, yeah. Inna ka intadharum, oh Allah, if you leave them, if you leave those disbelievers who are not going to believe, yudillu ibadah, they will lead your servant astray. وَلَا يَلِدُ إِلَّا فَاجِرًا كفر. And they will not give birth to any, except to, they will not give birth except to disobedient and disbelieving children. <laughs> right? This is why he prayed against them. Of course, that's the best solution to save humanity. That these disbelievers who's not going to believe, of course, that Allah take them, right? So that they will not lead others astray and that they will not give birth to misleading and misled children. So Sayyidina Nuh would say, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself, go to others, go to other one, go to Ibrahim. So every messenger will tell them, go, go, go to another one. Every messenger will say, same thing, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself. Allah, if the messengers are saying this, if the messengers are saying, myself, I, I, have, I, I cannot. And when they come to our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what will he say? Ana laha, ana laha. He will say, I am for it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the master of the creation. Allah gave him this level. Allah gave him. Allah gave him. He will say, I'm for it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he will prostrate before Allah. And he will say, we talked about alhamdulillah, right, to the alphabet. He will say, I will praise Allah with words that He will inspire me at that time. So now He doesn't know them. Allah will reveal to Him those praises at that time. Allah. So there are praises that we don't know about Allah. Because we don't know Allah yet. We don't know Allah in reality. So there are praises we don't know. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa doesn't know them now. Allah will reveal them to him at that time. Then after he makes those praises, it will be said to him what? Ya Muhammad irfa' ra'sak. Irfa' ra'sak. Ya Muhammad irfa' ra'sak. Wasal tu'ata wa shfa' tu shafa. Oh Muhammad, raise your head and ask and you'll be given. And intercede and you'll be accepted. That is called al-shafa'a al uzma the major shafa'a, the major intercession. This intercession of Sayyiduna Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it benefits even disbelievers. It encompasses even disbelievers. In what sense? It is for all people, because all people are running, they want the judgment to start. So that's called what? Shafa'a al uzma There are many types of shafa'a, for our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa Many types of intercession. This is called the major intercession. What will he say sallallahu alayhi wa He will not say myself, myself. He will say, oh Allah, ummati, ummati. My ummah, my ummah, my community, my followers. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ya Rasulullah. In one of the hadith we mentioned, he sallallahu alayhi wa in a long hadith, the angel told him because he showed mercy to the Ummah and he, he asked Allah to make it easy for the Ummah in regard with the recitation of the Quran, not to make it just one recitation or one, one reading, to make it more than one reading, to make it easy for the Ummah. Then the angel told him that Allah will give you for every request that you asked because he wanted mercy to the Ummah, he will give you a da'wah, he will give you supplication. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first dua I made 
he gave him three dua, three supplications. You remember Sayyidina Nuh, he said, Allah gave me dua, I made it against my people, right? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he, he was given three in that, in that context, in that hadith. He, he, he said the first one, oh Allah, forgive my ummah. And the second one, oh Allah, forgive my ummah. And he said, I kept the third one for my ummah on the day of judgment. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How, how come we don't love him? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How come we don't adore him? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How come we don't repeatedly make salawat for him? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And fill our hearts with his love? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, we will continue with Sayyidina Nuh alayhi wa sallam. The first messenger after Sayyidina Adam and Sayyidina Idris. And we will see how the dialogue will start with his people. Uh, and the accusi accusations, he, they will, they will uh, accuse him of. And the way he's calling his people. You, did he use just to call him like, call his people in certain times? Or whenever he has a chance. Layla wa nahara, sirran wa jahar. In public, in secret, at night, during the day, when? Sayyiduna Nuh, as our Shaykh used to say, may Allah have mercy on him, the Grand Mufti, the late Grand Mufti of Syria, he says, Sayyiduna Nuh is a school of da'wah. He is a, the school of da'wah, alayhi salam. A school of da'wah, 950 years, showing patience and perseverance and continuity and, and with all mockery and rejection from his people, we have to learn about him. We have to spend time learn about his characteristics, learn about how he used to dial, to have dialogue with his people, and about his mercy also. This shows you great mercy. Not like some, we misunderstand sometimes, oh, he prayed against his people, but our Prophet وسلم, he prayed for us. Well, yes, Rasulullah وسلم, prayed for us, and Sayyidina Nuh prayed against his people, because that's for the benefit of all people. <laughs> For the benefit of, of, because he's afraid about all of humanity, those people he prayed against, خلاص, Allah revealed to him, they're, they're, they're not going to believe. And he already spent 950 years, right? So sometimes we have to be aware of, of how we understand these traditions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to this speech and follow its best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give relief to our brothers and sisters who are suffering everywhere. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And did he make that du'a before or after he was started, commanded to start building the ark?